Um, to explain why momentum should be conserved, let me uh, use this example that you guys saw at the beginning of the class today. So when you see these two cards interacting, here's one scenario where it was, momentum was clearly conserved. After they collide, uh, momentum of this card was somehow transferred to this card, and that's it. Momentum is conserved. So let me use that as an example to try to drive why momentum should be conserved. So we are looking at this uh, situation here. I have a frictionless surface, and uh, mass one is moving to the right, and mass two um, is not moving initially. And I guess I don't really care if they are moving or not. So here's another way the momentum can be conserved. If they're both moving towards each other, after collision, they kind of move away from each other. So here, what would you say the total momentum is before the collision? What is the total momentum of the cards A and B? So what kind of momentum does card A have? Hmm? Are you saying the total momentum is zero? Yeah, total momentum should be zero. So cart A has rightward momentum, cart B has leftward momentum, so they balance each other out, you add up, you get zero. So before collision, they had zero net momentum, and after collision, they also have net zero momentum. So, so in this interaction, you know, the one where you could clearly see that momentum was conserved is this one, but I'm saying, you know, how they are moving, I don't really care. So how these two are moving, I don't really care. What really matters to me is the interaction between them. How cart A is pushing cart B. So how, since I'm using labels A and B, how cart A is pushing cart B. That's the description that I care about. So let me draw a free body diagram to try to see um, how I can go from the description of the interaction between these two masses to the result that momentum should be conserved. So they are, these are the free body diagrams of these two masses, mass A and mass B. Let me ignore all the uninteresting forces like gravity and normal force. You know, gravity pulls it down, normal force balances it. Nothing really interesting happens with those. So let me just, uh, uh, let me just uh, draw interesting forces here. When you look at the interaction between cart A and B, is there any force on cart B? I mean, looking at cart B, would you conclude that there is a force on it? Right? Yeah, it's the magnetic force which we are trying to not to talk about. In this. But there is a force on cart B. The way you know that is, well, it's uh, getting pushed to the right. It's uh, accelerating to the right. So you know that there must be some kind of force on cart B. Let me just label that as uh, force on B. All right. Is that it, or should I have additional uh, forces on my set of free body diagrams? What? Okay. So what do you point to and say, this is why there's a force on cart A? So it has an initial velocity, and it goes from zero. Okay. So you see cart A accelerating also. It was had a rightward velocity. When it goes to zero, that means it's accelerating to the right, uh, to the left. So the cart A is also accelerates similarly to how cart B accelerated. So there's a force on A uh, that's to the left. Force on A. All right. I guess since I know there are masses, if I have force on A and force on B, then I guess that's uh, um, enough to calculate the um, enough to calculate the, the the change in momentum. I do have to kind of assume some amount of duration of time, so you know some duration of interaction. It might take you know half a second or whatever. So let's try to calculate um, let's try to calculate the net impulse. So the net impulse on both of these objects. And uh, from what we were saying about impulse, why did I erase it? From what we were saying about impulse, that it's the change of momentum 
um, if we calculate net impulse, that should tell us what the change of net momentum is. Okay? So, um, so what net impulse should be is impulse on block A plus impulse on block B. So that would be the, the force on A. That's the only, I mean, it should be net force on A, but that's the only force on A. So force on A times some duration of time plus force on B times some duration of time, right? Yeah? What kind of force is it? Uh, I mean, okay, so here it's magnetic force. Right? I mean, they are not touching each other. Uh, but it could have been normal force. So I don't want you to get too hung up on the nature of the forces, because it could have been something like this. I have these two balls. And can they, here. All right. So it could have been these two balls interacting with each other. So in this case, the force is normal force, but the result is similar. So you know, like this. So I don't want you to get too hung up on what kind of force it is. Um, what's important here is that, well, there is some kind of applied force on B. And there is some kind of applied force on A. But maybe we should talk about how these two are related. Are they related? How are they related, Ali? Uh, the force on A is from B. OK, so force on A by B. Okay, what are you trying to say here? Um, and vice versa, force on B by A. So you're still trying to tell us something that you haven't quite come out and said it. I'm also thinking when you apply force on A, shouldn't there be force on A as well? I see. So since this is force on B by A, yeah. you are saying there should be reaction force on um, uh, A, plug A. I B, that there should be reaction force here. Hey, aren't these the actual reaction force pairs? Yeah, these two forces that we have already drawn, they are the action reaction force pairs. So these, so, yeah. So these are the action reaction force pairs. And you know, as I keep saying, whether you label one the action and the other the reaction, or if you swap them around, say this is action and that's reaction, um, in terms of Newton's third law, it doesn't matter because they happen simultaneously. As in, this is what I mean. So if uh, for these two carts, if this uh, cart B wasn't here for A to apply force on, then A would have just gone without experiencing any force there. The only reason A is experiencing a force it's because cart B is here. So because of the presence of cart B, the A, as it's trying to push through here or move through here, it feels a force that pushes that way. So in that sense, you could say, well, this is the action force. A gets pushed back, and this is the reaction force. But what matters here is that these two forces are related to each other by Newton's third law. So what does that tell you about this quantity here that I was writing? Yes? Yeah, so I could actually rewrite it this way. So this is minus force on B, right? Equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, times delta T plus force on B times delta T. Hey, that looks like that adds up to zero. Um, I, we should probably touch on this. Um, I wrote down from the beginning the uh, same duration of time instead of saying delta T A and B. Was I justified in saying that the duration of the time is same is for both forces? Yeah, because these two are part of the one and the same interaction. The moment this force goes away, this force also goes away. So these two times should be the same time, 
which means you know everything is justified and net impulse is equal to zero. This is the you know net impulse. Net impulse is equal to zero. So now does it matter if these two had the same mass or if one was heavier than the other? Does that affect uh, whether net, the, the fact that net impulse here is zero? It doesn't, right? So you know, actually, the way I started out, I started out saying that they had a different mass. So whatever mass that these have won't change the fact that net impulse has to be zero. And really, uh, this is what I wanted to, what I wanted to impress on you that something's wrong with this pen. When I close it, it won't open again. Uh, what we wrote down here, this was the important step here. This is coming from Newton's third law. I think when we covered the Newton's law, did I tell you Newton's third law is the most important of the three laws of Newton? I didn't. I might have said it's the most confusing one, but it's also the uh, it's the most important one. It's because it's because of Newton's third law that we can say this, that we can say net impulse here is zero, and because of this. Through this, we can say that, that it's from Newton's third law that we can say this, that momentum is conserved. As in, if a net impulse is equal to zero, then, well, net impulse is what gives change of the total momentum. If net impulse is equal to zero, change in total momentum is zero. If momentum is not changing, that's what it means for it to be conserved, that it's not changing. So, the, so you know, I said at the beginning of today's class that uh, with the momentum, we are not going to start out saying that it's a, a conserved quantity, that we are going to derive that um, it should be a conserved quantity. This derivation here, it follows directly from Newton's third law. In fact, you could say these two things are equivalent to each other. Momentum, is, momentum being conserved means Newton's third law is correct, and Newton's third law being correct means momentum is conserved. Um, if you guys take other um, like upper division physics classes like electrodynamics, this will come up at some point because there are situations you can think of in electricity and magnetism where it appears as though Newton's third law is not correct. There, I want you to have this intuition that Newton's third law has to be correct. Otherwise, this uh, one of the most uh, important law of nature, um, the moment you compromise this, you compromise this. Because they are one and the same thing. Newton's third law, so I call it law of interaction. I can also call it law of conservation of uh, momentum. So, uh, so with the energy, there wasn't any law that said energy must be conserved. We kind of constructed energy in such a way that it must be conserved quantity. With the momentum, um, you know, we start out with this definition of momentum, and here's the law of nature that says this must be a conserved quantity. 